what you keep repeating out loud or what you keep telling yourself or tell other people, it's going to become habit. And that's what you're going to receive back because you keep doing the same things based on your mindset over and over and over again. So Welcome everyone to the Lifestyle Engineer Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Schnart. And today I have Mario Casada with me and I nailed it. Did I nail it? You did. That's good. I nailed it. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Mario is a branding content expert and a mindset coach as well. Uh, certifiable content coach. I saw that. So <laughs> let's just get right into that. What does that mean? Um, you know, I everybody's all all worked up about like being certified this or not certified that. And I was like, you know, it's just kind of silly, right? Content at the end of the day is, is just, it's just putting ideas out and, and continuing to, uh, present ideas, teach people, entertain people. Um, and so I was just, I was just doing a little tongue in cheek on the certified thing, but, uh, certifiable just because, um, I know about content because I'm doing it really. I'm not like, it's not like it's, I'm, I'm, a, I'm like this, you know, content guru. I just, I'm, I'm really good at, at understanding how to, how to put stuff out. And so I'm more certifiable than I am certified. So, okay. I like that because I mean, there's so many <laughs> titles and so I basically came up with the name lifestyle engineer. I'm sure other people have used it, but why not? <laughs> right. Yeah, like, what does matter. that mean? You get to, you get to explain what that is. Exactly. Um, exactly. So Mar Mario, for those listening, is actually the one who helped me define my true alpha coaching brand. So initially it was called resilient alpha and amongst other things, like there was a lot of tips and things that we talked about. And one thing that really stuck with me was the four syllable thing, right? Like anything yeah. longer than four syllables is, well, I guess I'll let you explain it. I don't well, I'm, I'm explaining it. Yeah. I think in the branding world, um, anything more than four syllables, people start to, uh, truncate. So, um, you know, uh, if you, uh, what's a, what's a, what's a, you know, a basic example would be federal express, right? Federal express is five. People just started calling it FedEx, right? So much so that federal express changed their own name and logo to FedEx. Um, because, because that's what people are calling it. So there's something in the, in the brain where, uh, past five syllables, people just start to shorten things. People want something short. Uh, the shorter it is, the more memorable it is. Obviously, um, a one syllable, one word, um, uh, is probably the most memorable thing, right? Um, a one syllable uh, or a two syllable, one word is, is probably the next best thing, right? And some of those, some of those are our, our favorite brands, Nike, Apple right? Um, Amazon is three, right? And we just tell, we just, we just may, we want the shortest possible version of a name, but this, that's because it, it, it just helps us memorize it and remember it. It's more memorable. That makes sense. So our greater purpose, health and fitness, that's our, it's a lengthy one. So a lot of people, we just bit. say G, GPHF, right? Exactly. It's GPHF. Right. It, it's because it, it's, it's just too much to say. Um, and the, the, I think we talked about this at one point where the, the harder you make it for people to remember your name, the more they're going to try to, to try to make sense of it in a shorter amount of time mm. or a shorter amount of space. Um, right. you know, so there's, there's a lot of companies that go by their, their acronym or whatever, because, because it's just, it's just too much to say. So right. they start becoming known by their acronyms, right? That makes sense. So what, I know this is probably a broad question, but what's a common mistake you see people trying to start their brand, whether it's a personal brand or it's a business brand, what's a mistake that you tend to see quite often? Oh, uh, that's a deep question. <laughs> <clears throat> and that's um, funny because to me it doesn't, it's, and I think when you're in, um, certifiable <laughs> in any <laughs> given area, it, you can go deeper, but to me, it's just like, well, maybe the color's off or this or that. But when you answer, it's like a deep question. It, it catches. Yeah. Me. So it, it depends on, 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 first of all, let's, let's define brand, right? Is, is, are we talking about brand as in what most people think about brand 
which is the color scheme, the the logo, the mark, mm. um, which is which is what people really think brand is. Whereas the actual true true nature of a brand is really everything, all the substance of of that brand. It's the persona, it's the values, it's the core, it's the core of the message. Um, that's what actually makes a brand. Um, so the one of the mistakes people make when they're trying to create their own brand is they focus on the extensions, which what is what I call it, right? They they focus on the visuals, they focus on getting the coolest logo possible, they focus on the the face uh, of the brand without creating the substance and spending time in the substance. You were almost opposite, where you had a really deep understanding for yourself of of what this should be. And because of that, you you were you were thinking this grandiose long is like oh it's resilient and this and that and it's because you're you're trying to personify all the feelings that you were um all the feelings and the emotions and the, and the message that you have created for now true alpha right mm -hmm. and, and i think one of the questions i asked you was like what what is it at the core that you want for these men right and and your your answer kind of came, kept coming back is like I just want them to be to under understand how to be how to how to be true men or truly be men or and you just kept saying true over and over again and that that became the essence of what what we had talked about after that but I think that again like that the it in design school right we 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 say um, form follows function right and so when you're when you're focusing on the form. You can create this beautiful thing, but then it won't work, right? But if you focus on how it works or how it communicates or the message you're trying to come um, bring to the masses or bring to your audience, you focus that, then you can actually make uh, a very beautiful form that is essential and and specific, so specific that it sets its it sets its seed in in your in your your company's mind or your, your community's mind. Um, so that's, that's probably, probably the, the quickest way I can probably answer that is like, they, they focus on the form rather than the, the function or the, or the substance. Yeah, that's helpful. I mean, and when I was, you were working with me and creating mine and I was working on it myself prior, I was nervous. I was going to leave something out. Right. And it's, yeah. for me, it's like, how do I, how do I bring all this in my mind, all my life experience, all that I want to, um, personify in this brand, how do I show that with one word? And I think that's, I had, um, Anthony Doe. So he's an amazing photographer on a couple episodes ago. And I was talking about how I'm starting to notice really good artists and creatives. They can tell a story with like, one word right and to be able to like create this <laughs> yeah. map and this web from one word one picture one 30 second video i think that's fascinating yeah there's uh there's a term I, I learned in school and i've looked it up since and i i can't really find any any like papers on it or 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 um or any like real um like real like tangible research on it, but it's stuck in my mind so much so that I remember it till this day, you know, 20, 30 years later. But as a, as a, I'm a trained graphic designer. So as a graphic designer in school, I went to this kind of fancy art school in Pasadena. Um, they would, they would hammer into us, keep taking things away until the last thing you take away destroys the message. Like you want to keep taking things away, basically making it the essence of the message so much so that if you take one more thing away, it's not there. There's, there's, there's the message is gone. Right. And the, the term for that, that I was told, um, and I, I'm just I'm just holding on to it because I just love the 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 sound of it. But it's called the law of irreducibility. It cannot be reduced any further because any further reduced 
it would destroy the message or it would destroy the, the visual or it would destroy the form. It actually wouldn't work anymore. So you have to, it's the essence of, of what it is. And then, then you can, once you have the essence, you can apply the message so much more powerfully. Yeah. I've heard that before and I've heard that law before. And I think even writing, right? Like uh, in my cold punch videos, I tried to create a short and concise phrase and then I talk from there. And that's why I think I have a hard time finishing books because once I get this phrase or like the point of the book, I just want to use that because the rest <laughs> you know is just to fill the pages. Yeah. I'm looking yeah. for a book that's 10 pages long. So <laughs> <laughs> 10 pages long, bite-sized phrases, yeah, key, key terms. And you're just like, I want to underline everything of all these 10 pages and you could fill and volumes them. with it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, cause that, that's the goal, right? And I mean, maybe that's the goal of the brand, a book of social media. Like it's to elicit change and action with the purpose of the brand, with the purpose of the message. Yeah. If you can essentialize your purpose and this is, this is for anything. Right. I mean, you could take this as a life lesson, right? If you can essentialize your purpose into two words or less, four syllables or less, if we go back to that, right, then it becomes very tangible for you, becomes hyper memorable. And from that, you can start applying more and more meaning to it, right? But if you have this huge flowery, like poetic, you know, thing where it's like, it's like oh, blah, 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 blah. And you're going for, for hours and hours about, about your thing, you're, you're going to forget it. And it's not going to really be part of your life. The smaller it is, the shorter it is, the more concise it is. And this is the, this is the key, right? It's the, the simpler it is, the more actionable it is. You know this in the fitness, in the fitness area, right? If we can make it super simple, I've, I've been a coach and I, you know, I've been, I've been in the CrossFit scene for a long time. The simpler we can make the teaching cues, the easier they can get it. And the easier they can get it, the quicker they grow in, into a better athlete, a better, a better student, whatever it is. Um, music, everything's the same. It, it's really interesting the way, the way God's made us is he, he's made us in a, such a way that um, the world is complex. The world is vastly complex. He, God is vastly complex, right? But he came and he had a very simple message and he made it so simple that children could understand it, right? Why? Because he's, because we're, we're kind of dumb. <laughs> we need things <laughs> so simple so yeah. that it can cement itself. It can worm itself in our heads and yeah. then we can act on it. And, and, you know, God knows, like if, if it's a simple concept, I know they can act on that. If I make it too complicated, no one's going to do anything. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that's that, I mean, you know, this in the coaching world too, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we think of virtuosity doing the common uncommonly well, yeah. and I've done it myself. I know like I don't coach as much as I did in the gym or gym or train as much as I did before, but as a coach on the coach's end, you would get caught up in using words like triple extension or flexion or hyperextension or flexion of the spine or global extension, <laughs> all these, all these terms, right? Because yeah. it's explaining something, but it's not explaining in the way that someone can take action on. So right. in terms like triple extension, for those who don't know, it would be basically extending your ankle, your knee and your hip all at once. So it happens in the Olympic lifts. But when you simplify it down for someone, you say jump, right? Like just <laughs> jump and because jump. it's going to accomplish the same outcome. It actually might accomplish the outcome sooner because you're not complicating in your head. And then I yeah. think on the trainee side, we often try to, if we're learning something new, we're trying to grow in a different area of life, like mental, physical, spiritual, relational, professional. We try to make it too complicated. We try to progress too quickly. So then what right. happens, like we're talking air squat, you want to go past the air squat. You want to do the overhead squat, 
and you get right to the overhead squat and then you you meet your threshold and then you realize oh i gotta go back to the air squat because i didn't learn <laughs> the foundational things right. right right it's it's and i think that word is key right foundational right if you can build a foundation on simple actionable terms then the person holding that foundation can always go back to those simple actionable terms and build it back up from that point, right? Build back up from that point. I remember years ago, I, I, I hurt my back Olympic lifting, funnily enough. And it was like, I'll, I'll show you the video later, but it was, I, I felt I, I was recording. I recorded everything, which is great. Cause I have this recording forever of this, of this injury. It felt like somebody came behind me and hit me with a baseball bat on my back. It just like, that was the, the sharpness of the, the, the really felt like the smack on my back when I was, I was mm. trying to do a snatch. Um, and it was a weight that I had done before and it was frustrating. And I just ra rushed right up. Anyway, I hurt my back. I was on my, I was on my back for, for weeks. Um, and it took a, took a friend like half an hour to figure out how to get me up from the floor. Uh, cause I was just, so, I was in such bad shape. Um, but I reached out to some people. I was like, look, I am not afraid of trying again, but I, I have reached my threshold of how I was doing it before. Obviously there's something wrong. So teach me how to go back to zero, less than zero negative and retool my foundation and teach me what I missed. And I had a, had a local coach and I had a, I had a coach in, in Florida and they're like, you need to spend a month just with a PVC pipe. And that was killing me. I was like, I was like, I, well, I'm barely, I'm barely at, at the point where I was like, okay, I can, I can stand again. And I, right. multiple, con you know, multiple chiropractor visits. I'm like, okay, I can feel good. I can squat with, you know, 95 pounds on my back. I'm all right. Okay. Slow, keep it slow. I'm not a slow yeah. guy. I don't like going slow ever, <laughs> which is why I hurt myself. And so I spent, I spent some, I was, I was like, all right, I'm just going to do it what they say. And that month, and then the following month and a half, I think. So it was, it was a good solid 10 weeks, a month with a PVC pipe, the month after that, just with a barbell. And it was all about bar path, position, feet placement, bar path, position, feet placement. And I was re, it was, it was, I was literally re training my mind and my body to do things in a new, different way, which was the right way. And it changed everything. Yeah. It changed everything. Six months later, I had a major PR and it, that PR was 40 pounds heavier than the weight that I hurt my back with. And it's, it, because it was just, I learned how to do it right. Yeah. And there's three big things that I think you can pull from that is having the humility to ask for help, right? You could have gone oh, yeah, right back sure. to the gym and be like, no, I'm just going to try harder or I just need a rest <laughs> and do the same thing. I'm yeah. Like eventually something needs to change if something happens, right? Like over and over and again, I'm not saying that happened over Absolutely. and over again. And the other part is the mindset. Like you're talking about how you had to feet placement, um, bar path, I'm sure catching position, all these different things that you had to ingrain in your head. And I think, cause you talk to your mindset coach as well. We talk about, I talk about this a lot too, is what you keep repeating out loud or what you keep telling yourself or tell other people, it's going to become habit, right? And it's, yeah. and that's what you're going to receive back because you keep doing the same things based on your mindset over and over and over again. So I think a lot of people struggle with the idea of hiring mentors or coaches for mindset, but it's the one of the most impactful things I believe you can do. It's, it's astonishing. I, I, I just got like a couple of testimonies back from, from some guys that I've coached and the things that they said, I don't even remember happening really, hmm. but it was because of a small shift in their brain that they were now able to reframe a situation a thought, um, an application of something 
in a new way. And because of that understanding that they could do that, they started doing that with everything else in their life. And that's what brought about change. I was like, you know, people are like, well, what is a mindset coach? It's like, well, I just, you know, you, you help people think differently is as simple as I can say it, right? That's the simplest form of what a mindset coach or, or, or person is. It's like, I help you think differently. Mm -hmm. and that's it. I can't train you to do that. You, that's your job. Yeah. I can show you the, I, I can show you how to do it, but you are actually have to be in the gym every day doing it, repeating it to yourself. Uh, it's very interesting. Yeah. And I also, if you go deeper than that, we talk about purpose. I see this like alignment of, okay, so you hurt your back. That was a purpose to be like either good or bad purpose. Something's going <laughs> to, right? Like, Pain can drive purpose too. You say, I need to change something here. So then your mindset has to shift and saying, I'm probably going to have to let go of my ego for a while. And well, maybe not, <laughs> not by your choosing, but your coach's choosing saying, I need to go back to the Dell. That's a lot of humility. And that rewires your brain to be okay with that and to practice these things because you had a coach. And then when you practice these things, it's actually the action. It's not that you can sit there and say, I want a better mindset so I can lift heavier. No, you have to actually take action with that, yeah. right? And whether it's slowing down, whether it's actually pushing yourself a little harder, getting a little more uncomfortable, but there has to be something you're rooted to what I call the anchor method. You have to anchor yourself hmm. to something in order to make sure you can handle the ups and downs that you're going to inevitably face. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, you, you need to get to a place where you're, you're receiving, you're, you're open. You're not just asking for help, but you're open to receiving that help. People ask me for help all the time and then just disregard what I say, which is fine. Is it, you know, I, I will, I will give you, I will give you counsel or I will coach you, but it's up to you again. Um, you have to be open to doing the, the prescription basically. Right. And I recently uh, was reminded of, uh, of something that when, when you, when you read something, you're learning with your eyes, but if you read something and you say it out loud, now you're actually, now you're actually taking action, even just in, in the saying of it. Well, now if you see something and you say something, you're already taking action on it. But now as you say something, you're hearing yourself. So it's now it's like eyes mouth and ears are hearing and seeing the same action. And that is actually a shortcut to get you started. It's like, okay. So I, and I would, I would be talking, I would, I'd go in and open gym all by myself. I had, I had keys to that gym for, for a while. Cause we were running a, a, a brand out of there, but, um, I would go in and I would, I would just, I would tell myself, I would say, slow down out loud. I <laughs> say, mm. slow down, slow down, you know, Bar to bar to bar to hips, not hips to bar. And I would just I would literally be coaching myself out loud because I'd be hearing my coach's words in my mind, saying them out loud, and then hearing them again in my own voice. So now right. I've I've actually taken action and I've taken those thoughts and taken ownership over them by saying them. And now hearing myself say them is like, okay, this is my thought now. This is right. my this is my routine. This is the way I do things now. Um, and it's a powerful way to actually start to train yourself to do hard things. And some, sometimes hard things are going back to zero. That's an ego yep. thing, right? Yep. Going back to zero is an ego thing. Um, you know this, you, 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 you've played sports and you're a coach and, you know, I'm sure you've, you've been hurt. You've had some teeth knocked out, right? So it's, it's an ego thing. And the sooner you can drop your ego enough to be open to learn and take action on that learning, uh, man, the, the, the better off you will be like immediately. It's pretty, For sure. it's pretty amazing. Well, cause I have a similar story. Like I injured my back oh. deadlifting. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. And mine was like a four or five year thing because Ooh. I didn't find a coach right away. I heard it deadlifting. 
rested for a week, couldn't really walk. I was like, oh, I feel better. I'm going to heavy back squat. Same thing, right? And it just kept. <laughs> so basically, like, I, I was being refined. There was lessons to be learned there, right? Because I, I think fitness was becoming an idol to me at that mm. point. Um, and so I'm grateful for going through that, but I do not want to go through that again. But same thing, right? It's like, I was doing it for the wrong reasons. Yeah. I was I was wanting to go to at that time the CrossFit Games because it looked cool and people look up to you for that, right? But through that whole process, I realized, oh, I'm just trying to lift heavy. I'm just trying to do these things so I can be acknowledged and noticed. And I'm grateful that I've been freed from that. And I just mentioned on a podcast I was just on someone else's podcast that um sometimes i share the bar with my wife when we squat so my <laughs> ego's pretty in check <laughs> what well, your your wife is what a foot and a half shorter than you yes <laughs> yeah i'd say my femurs are at least at least six feet long right so <laughs> <laughs> oh, i can man. power i can power clean but uh get me below parallel it's hard getting back up <laughs> I'm just you're doing you're doing a quarter squat just to get off get that bar off the off the yes. rack. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like you're, it's you're already doing good. extra work. <laughs> yeah. It's been good for my humility. I so I want to ask you a question earlier. You're talking about a short purpose statement. Mm -hmm. Do you have any examples of that in your own life? Oh, what a great question. Um that is something that I'm constantly trying to refine. I think because because of this idea of um, make the complicated simple. Um, so my a few years ago, when I moved to Hawaii, I'm, I'm in Hawaii and uh, and um, I'm in Hawaii 14 years ago, and um, got here and had all these ideas. My my brother and sister were already here, so I had, I had connections and I had, I had community here. Um, but I was, had all these ideas. I was going to like, I was going to come in and change branding here. And it was going to be like this thing. And, and I landed and no one would talk to me. Um, it didn't matter what my pedigree was. Didn't matter where I went to school. I was not from here. So people, it's, it's a very, it's a very close knit. Um, who do you know so that I can check you out kind of place. I call it, I call it a very big, small town. Cause once you're here for a little while, you start to know any, you're literally one person removed from anybody you want to meet. Um, and so I, I was pretty humbled and I spent a good part of a year, um, with just my laptop, my Bible, my journal and, and my surfboard, because that's all I had. And that's all I could do. I was doing a little bit of work here and there for the church. I started through that. God just, God just completely, um, brought me to nothing. And it was great. I, I call it my, my, my desert, my desert in paradise, um, uh, experience. But through that, um, I realized a few things. I was afraid to be by myself. I was afraid to, um, contemplate my own things my own self. I was, I was afraid to work on myself because I was afraid of, of what I might find. Um, and I was afraid of what God wanted me to do. Um, and through that over, you know, a few years period, uh, God really gave me an understanding that wherever I am is where I'm supposed to be who he's called me to be. Okay. And who he's called me to be is someone who encourages, exhorts, and activates people. Because I started, I started auditing what I do in every situation, any situation I'm in for any experience, extended period of time, I find my, my, my innate ability to encourage the people around me, exhort them or, or put them on the right track, tell them, you know, telling them to stop doing whatever they're doing that is harmful for them or, um, and then activating them into a positive place through that. 
And so that's my very long-winded answer of saying, yes, my purpose, as God's shown me, is to encourage, exhort, and activate. And I'm starting to refine even, even who that's for. I, I do it for, I do it just naturally because that's who he's made me to be. But I'm, I'm really starting to focus on, um, like yourself, like, like, like our friend Eric, um, I have, I have a real heart for, for men. And, and, and what I've, what I've found is I start looking around and, and I start seeing the men that are actually kind of, they kind of just naturally gravitate toward me. And he's like, there's like really rough, like kind of gruff men that, that just kind of gravitate toward me, you know, normally a lot of military guys, a lot of like just guys that have gone through hard stuff. And for whatever reason, they, they naturally open up to me and I'm able to encourage them, exhort them and activate them into a better place. Um, so yes. <laughs> yes, I, I like that. I, hopefully, so, hopefully, I answer your question. <laughs> yeah, it almost yes, yes, you did because I, I have through my coaching process, I have people create core values, right? And it's a word, but it also means more underneath of the word, right? Like, how can you apply this word to different situations? So, encourage, exhort, and activate. Correct. Yeah, that's yeah. So, that's almost it almost sounds like a system too in your mind, right? Like, do you think of it in that way? Is like, do you start by encouraging? Then um, I, I, I often find that the order does matter, which I, I didn't really, I didn't really think about it in the beginning like that. I was like, Oh, these are just the things that God has me do. Um, and then I started realizing that, Oh, the, the order does matter. Right. Because, with the encouragement, I, I build trust and I break, I break walls, I break barriers. And with barriers down, I can then enter in to a place where I can exhort them. I can say, Hey, let's look at, let's look at what you're doing and let's look at the life you're living and let's look at the decisions you're making. These are the things that are holding you back. These are the things that are your barriers naturally. You say you have these problems. Well, these are the things that are causing those problems. So that the encouragement allows the trust to build, allows the barriers to go down, allows exhortation to happen. And our exhortation happens in a, in, a, in a circle of trust almost because of that. And because of that, they're willing to take action because of of the way um the way god uses me to work through does it is it always you know oh i gotta i gotta do this i gotta do that it's not it's not right. really i don't think about it like that i just know that usually when guys come to me they usually need a little encouragement yeah. and that allows them to break their barriers down and allows me to speak into their life which takes them on a, on a, on a positive tra trajectory usually. Right. Yeah. There's a lot in there. And as you're talking, it's that encouragement piece is building that relationship, building that trust. Like you can't, you can't speak truth to someone without first building that loving yeah. relationship, right? We build relationships that can withstand loving truth. And right. I think there's a lot of opinions and maybe People who have good intent, they want to help people grow, but they, they haven't built a relationship to be able to speak into someone's life. So what's the intent behind it, right? Right. Is to build that trust. And I think a lot of that comes to branding too. Yeah, oh, a lot of people, yeah. yeah. I think you go ahead. No, yeah, you're 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 spot on. I want I wanted to hear what you, you were gonna say, but yeah, I no, think I, a lot of people start with like if we're talking about you're building a brand because you want to sell something, you want to sell a service, you want to help someone with their problem. You see the people so often go to myself included, I fall into this is what do they want to sell first? Instead of saying, I want to build a brand that people can trust so that when I create something that could be beneficial to them, they already trust me, right? They trust me as a person and they right. know that I'm going to create something of value, something of meaning, something of purpose. Yeah. Uh, there, there, the history of like 
just a really quick little trip down memory lane, but in the, in the fifties, right. If a company said something, people just took them at their word, Hmm. right. People just like, Whoa, yes. Okay. You are the best because you say it. And obviously you're, you're, you're in that position because you say, you know, you are who you say you are. And over time, people start to realize, well, like, oh, well, actually, they're not really who they say they are. So they became very skeptical. And now it's about, um, it's about trust building more than anything. A tr- trust builds community and community builds the brand, really, right? Because it's really about who they think and say that you are, that's actually your brand. That, right. that, that, that sounding board of the people that you serve or say you serve, what they say about you is really your brand because that's what you've put out. That's what you've emoted. That's what you've given and they've received it and they're saying, okay, yes, that's either this is true about them. They're more than that or they're less than that. Right. Right. And, and so with that idea and you're starting to realize this like gangbusters right now, like you're starting to see community be built because of your steadfastness of what you've been putting out and that longevity of that steadfastness of, of your message, specifically talking about your, 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 your morning ice bath right? Mm -hmm. People are saying, whoa, this guy's been doing this for this long. This guy's legit. I want to hear more about what this guy says. I want to hear more about what he's about. I want to know what he's, I want to know what else he's saying. I want to know what else he's about, because if he's this diligent in doing this one very difficult thing that many people in the world can't even imagine to do, right? every day diligently and he's showing us and he's just he's just look he's feeding his dog ice and he's he's just hanging out (laughs) hanging out with his beanie and his coffee in in an ice bath it's like it's just normal this is like it looks like it it looks like you're taking a a warm bath mat and it's really weird yeah it's really weird but (laughs) i'm gonna go i'm gonna i'm gonna go stay at your house one day i'm I'm gonna i'm gonna have you break ice and you're gonna gonna see me turn blue because i hate being cold that's why i live in hawaii but um the your message has rung true because you just said the same thing over and over and over again. And people are saying, Hey, look, he's been doing this since, since this time. And it, you can actually go back and see every day. I love that you're doing your, your, your kind of like, um, trip down memory lane and say, Oh, this is like this last year. This is, this was two years ago. Right. This is when I just started. This is, this is what it looked like when he had just started. Right. And, for 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 that people to see that and then see you in your normal daily routine now it's like what the heck like it's crazy how different the experience is but because of that because you're showing your journey i think that's what people are missing right now if you show authentically your journey and you're genuine about it that builds trust more than anything really yeah, I, I do. I do a small, a small little talk on and and course on like quickly building trust with people, and the whole thing is about having your head empty and your heart full. So when you meet mm-hmm. them, your head is empty. So you want to inquire. You want to learn. I don't mm-hmm. want to have any pre- preconceived ideas about who you are. I want to learn who you are from you right now. And the more the more I present an authentic, genuine desire to learn about you, the more you trust me to, t- to, to give me and to tell me. And I can't, I, I can't, and I can't tell you how many times I've heard this phrase on a first time call with somebody I just met, but they say, I don't know why I'm telling you this, but, and they just go into these deep places. Yep. Because I've been able to build some kind of trust by sharing with them, being vulnerable with them. And that's what you do with your story, right? With what you've done with your story. It's like, Hey, uh, this is, this is just my journey. This is why I'm doing this. These are the things that are good because of this. Right. Mm -hmm. And people are going to see that and want to dive into, to whatever, 
whatever you're selling, saying, your messages, whatever that is, right? Um, it's a it's a very backwards from the fifties backwards economy now. It's interesting, right? Yeah, and it's kind of almost goes back to there's a few things I want to dive a little bit deeper on, but just a quick point is like how you said certifiable uh, content. Um, what, what's it exactly in there? Certifiable, certifiable content, content coach. Content coach. Yeah. yeah, it's basically. I think there's slowly progressing away from this more and more is just trusting people because of their accreditation or their education level or their status or their authority. Yep. And I think for people who are reliant on that, that's a scary thing, right? Because you can't, you can no longer just rely on, Hey, I have this knowledge, but do I have the care yep. behind it? Do I actually have these characteristics, the character of someone who actually wants to help? Or am I just, building up this knowledge base, trying to get these accreditations, trying to achieve authority or influence so that I can be admired. And you, you talked about how it builds trust on, let's use Instagram as an example. It builds trust mm -hmm. for the followers to, for me to be able to authentically share that. But it also is really freeing for me because I built this platform on who I am. Right. So I can have right. a conversation with you and just talk. I don't feel like I have to tiptoe around and be anything other than I am in order to keep whoever wants to follow me. And I think that's right. probably what a lot of people sacrifice is even in brand creation. I would like to hear your insight on this when they're creating a brand or even a business, they're doing it with an outcome in mind saying, I want X amount of followers. I want X amount of revenue. Not, not that any of those things are bad. But when you are just pursuing that, what if you just start getting into a career or you start selling things or you start doing things just for that outcome, but you don't actually like it, right? And you have to <laughs> sacrifice your authenticity for that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, people fall into that trap all the time because they're looking for, um, they're looking for the golden handshake at the end. They're like, oh, mm. I want that. I, I want, I want this trophy. I want this accolade. I want, I want a million followers. And until they do the, until they do the due diligence as of, as to why, right? If their why is because they want to get rich or they want to sell a bunch of stuff, people are going to see right through that. People don't mm -hmm. care. doesn't matter how many letters you have after your name. People see right through you. Right. But if you, if you flip it, and say, man, I want to, I want to help, you know, a billion people. I have a, I have a friend and a mentor uh, named Christo and his, his mission is to, to, you know, teach 1 billion people how to, how to have an amazing uh, career in, in design and, and business, right? That's, that's his, that's his mission. It's like, I want to help. I'm going to just give people, and he's got, you know, he's got 2 million people following him on YouTube and like, I think almost a million people following him on Instagram as it's crazy. And those things are, they're the afterburner. They're the, those are the things that, that, that just get attracted into your orbit when you're really truly focused on your mission. And if your mission is to help people, people are going to gravitate towards that. People are going to gravitate towards that in, in, in droves. And the more you, double down on why you're doing what you're doing and the more authentically that is you right you, the more authentically you come out as who you're so who you are then you never have to worry about a persona because the persona mm -hmm. is literally just your personality and you just right. come out and, and you are just who you are and so there's no there's no there's no fear of like I wonder if they're going to find out if X, Y, Z, it doesn't matter because if you're authentic, if you've come to the table with your true self, right, then there's nothing to worry about. But if you've created a persona in order to make people think a certain thing or do a certain thing or act a certain way, then that's going to, that's a house of cards and that's going to fall really right. quickly. What do you think about like, so imposter syndrome, I mean, 
we're entrepreneurs. We know what imposter yeah, yeah, syndrome yeah. is. And I just had this thought as you're talking there and just the way you articulated that made me think of this. Um, obviously there's imposter syndrome when you're doing something new, like that's natural, right? You yeah. should be doing things that make you uncomfortable so you don't become complacent and then stagnant. But there's also the aspect of what if there's this feeling of discomfort when you're stepping into who you've been truly designed to be because you've been trying to be something you're not because you're trying to pursue things that the world tells you you want mm. when you're not pursuing actually what God has created you to be. And because I think, man, it, I mean, I fall into that still and continually. And I say still because I'm continually trying to work on that. Um, yeah. And I, I'm still falling into that. But do you look around and you see, I can't help but think that this is not how God's designed each person to live a life in fear and in masking in success, masking in trying to yeah. find meaning in these things, right? And yeah. it's probably uncomfortable to break free of that persona that you created to fit in with the world. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I, I completely... I'm with you on all points there. Um, you know, we we are meant to. I had a I had a talk. I, I do a, a mindset conference, and um, I'm not sure if it'll happen this year. But if I do, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna pull you into that. But cool. I had a I have a friend who's a psychologist, and and she's a family uh, family psychologist, and and she was talking about um, imposter syndrome, and what she's what she said was the the closer the further you push into the thing that you know most and you're pushing the bounds of that that's when imposter syndrome hits because you're mm. pushing against the outer boundary of what you know because you don't know what's going to happen next and so you're like, I'm not sure I'm enough for this next step, mm. right? And the, uh, the the adverse is interesting, which you bring up, where people have created a life for themselves, a mentality, a mindset that this is the most important thing in my life. I'm going to go after this. And they get there and it's it falls short. And they realize that what they're searching for is not there. Hmm. And so now they're stuck in a place, they're stuck in a career, they're stuck in a lifestyle that they've created their whole life around. And they realize at some point that it's kind of a lie. And right. now they're just like, not sure what to do. I don't know if that's imposter syndrome or that's realizing that they've become an imposter in mm. their own life I like that right and and so I, that that to me is like i've, I've seen guys go through it I, I've, I've coached guys through it it's like oh i thought i was gonna have this i was talking to a guy yesterday and he without going deeply into his story him and his wife broke up they have kids and and he just like kind of woke up one day and he's like he's like he realized that they both thought that their married life was going to be one thing and the other person thought it was a different thing and they never came to terms with what it was and it and it just fell apart right it fell apart and that happens when we are trying to pursue things that we feel are going to fulfill us rather mm -hmm. than pursuing our true purpose, right? Our greater purpose, the real purpose that we're here on this earth for. And if we don't understand how to do that and, and, and we get entangled and embroiled in what the world is dictating that we do, all these things are, are well and good. Be successful, go after all you can, you know, build a, build a strong business. Yes, yes, yes. Those are great things to do, but why? Right. But why? Right. And if you get stuck in a place where the why is the reason, right? Or, 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 or the reason is the why is like, like, well, I got to do this because that's what I got to do. And I, apparently if I'm successful, I'm going to be happy. 
And at this point, I'm going to, I'm going to be able to do these things and at, you know, and everything, you're just putting a carrot in front of your face every day that is further and further out. And you actually literally confuse your life by chasing a rabbit hole that has no end, really. There's no, there's no end to that rabbit hole. Right. And you further distance yourself from who you are, which makes that, that process and the journey to get back to who you are very uncomfortable. Right. It's, like it's either it's, acutely it unravels or people. It unravels yeah. people because they have at they're they're at they're at this point and they and they just realize one day they don't know who they are and the people closest to them don't know themselves, don't know them either. And what a what a what a what a frightening place to be when where you're in this place where you're not sure who you are, but also the people around you that you feel are the closest to you don't know who you are either. So there's relationship damage, there's life damage, there's mental, emotional, spiritual damage, your relational damage, like everything crumbles at that point because you've been chasing after an idea that was unhealthy. Right. Yeah, it's an energy drainer too, right? To be something you're not. I think one of the biggest compliments and one of the things people should pursue is that someone is able to say about you, Hey, you're the same no matter where you are. Oh yeah. Right? Like whether it's professional, it's personal, or it's it's with your family, it's at work, it's with friends, it's hey, this is just who he is. This is just who she is. And because you're not trying to prove anything to anyone. And I think through the pandemic for myself, that was a lot of growth there is realizing you don't have to look for success in the world's eyes because success the definition of success is going to change tomorrow <laughs> and if you chase that <laughs> definition because yeah. if let's say it's a number and again it's not bad to be successful financially or business wise or whatever else but let's say the number of success is a million dollars and that's two million that's three million whatever it is how do you know when you've ever made it how do you know when you reach that point of fulfillment and if you believe this arbitrary number is what defines your fulfillment and gives you meaning and creates this authority in other people's eyes to you, you're going to continue to chase this thing. And then when you can no longer do it with, I guess, moral means, you'll end up starting to sacrifice who you are because you don't even know who you are to get there. Yeah. I was, I was just talking to somebody uh, recently about that where they, they just found out that, that, because of all the businesses and things that they've done over the years and how they've, how they've been successful, that they were now on, on paper, a millionaire, they had a a net worth of a million dollars. And I asked him, what has that changed? Does that change anything? And he's like, no, it actually makes me question more things than, than it changes anything because now I'm like, I thought that number was this, this, this magical thing where it's like, oh, I, I made it. But now he's, now he's thinking, okay, well, maybe that's 2 million. Maybe it's 4 million, maybe it's 10 million that I'm yeah. going to start feeling this thing. And the, the, there's this great quote by, I think it was, um, shoot, I think it was JD Rockefeller, uh, back in the, in the, 20s and they they they're interviewing him and they're like they're like uh mr rockefeller you're so rich he was a billionaire in the 20s right so he's just got he's just crazy money you're so rich you know how much how much is enough and his answer Mm. was 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 the answer of the world it's it's just one more just one more because every day it's just one more and you just keep chasing and chase because the, the chase never ends because the carrot is always there it just gets bigger right right and you exhaust yourself going down this this idea of success and i think this is important and maybe you maybe you've come across this too is like people will be chasing these ideas of success numbers metrics whatever it is at the expense of seeing how successful and treasured they already are. 
Hmm. And I say that to say this, if you are chase, constantly chasing and you're, out, you're constantly looking at, for the next thing, you're going to miss all the blessings that are around you in this moment. And you're never going to experience true blessing and true success that you already have by just looking around and seeing how much beauty, grace, love is, is in, in your present moment uh, because you're so worried about the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. You're, not, you're never going to be present. You're never going to be present because you're never going to be at that point that is defined as successful to the right. world. And like as I had accumulated, what, 30-some thousand followers in a month, and you, if you're on Instagram, you look and you see, well, okay, this person has 30,000, this person has a million, this person has 100,000. They have to be different people, right? They, there just has to be something different about them or there must be just able to, that must be meaningful. But they're still yeah. the same person, right? And I told my wife, Jaleesa, I was like, it's so funny to me. I've been saying the same things, <laughs> doing the same things, yeah. but somehow the algorithm picked it up, right? And like you said, that's because consistency on all this but I'm still the same me, but now there's weight behind my words because I have more followers, but I'm still the same person. And I think that's the whole, when you're talking about mission and purpose is don't worry about the followers. Don't worry about the money. Don't worry about these things. Obviously be a good steward and you can be successful and you can create things and pursue excellence, but just pursue that mission. And the byproduct will be the byproduct, but you won't be dependent on the byproduct for that meaning. Yeah. People get tripped up and they're like, oh, now I have to do something more. And they're trying to like, I have to do something more and I have to do something more. It's like, no, actually you just have to be yourself and you have to be more who you are and just know that you're affecting more hearts and minds by the things that you say and do. The weight becomes, oh, I can I can help more people. If you look at it that way, I was recently um, helping this this nonprofit organization, and and the the director hated social media, and they had at that time they had like uh, three hundred followers on Instagram, or whatever, and it's a ministry, and and they're they're you know they're serving they're serving sports ministries and stuff, and. I said, I said this, and I was like, you need to look at it differently. You need to look at this like a stadium. A stadium that's always filled with 300 people. And at any time, you can put the microphone on and tell 300 people about the amazing things God's doing. And it shifted his, it shifted his mind immediately. He's like, he's like, that is exactly what I needed to know. And since then... He's pushed in and he's, he's kind of leaned into the storytelling aspect and he's starting to grow. They're starting to grow because he's just doing the same thing, but now he's realizing, oh, I can speak to more people. I can tell more people. I can help more people. I can draw more people to, to ministry by just showing up. Right. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if, if, um, if two people like it or 102 people like it, right? It matters that I put it out there and that I show up and that people are receiving the message. That's what, that's what matters. Right. It's funny you mentioned that because I was out for supper the other night with Jaleesa and for those listening, she's my wife. And, uh, I said, I was like, how many people are in a stadium? Cause it's really hard to visualize Right. So yeah. whether it's a thousand, whether it's 300, whether it's 30,000 or a million, but when you think about it, yeah, you're literally stepping on a stage, whether it's 300, 1700, 30,000 or a hundred thousand or a million, you're stepping on a stage in front of all these people and you have been entrusted to steward a message to them. And the more authentically and the deeper rooted it is anchored in something meaningful and of value then there's so much fulfillment in that because you can say if that impacted one person to change the trajectory of their life. Awesome. So I had Phil Chan, um, who just released his book rhythms of resilience, correct? Yes. That's the one. 
And he sent me a, a message showing me that someone had seen my story and that I was reading his book and they reached out to him and that their journey back to God was happening because of that. Like there's so many little crazy that we have no idea, right? It's so awesome. Like, yeah, you, you, you have no, and that, I think that that was a, a huge, uh, shifting factor for me, um, years ago when, um, I really started to push into the idea of like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to start just speaking from my heart on social media and I'm just going to do that. And I naturally lean towards mindset and naturally lean towards encouragement, exhortation and, and activation, right? That's, if you look at my, my social media, it's basically those things I'm doing in, in a myriad of posts and not by, not by purpose, just by, by the extension of who I am. And, uh, randomly I would get just messages. It's like, wow, thank you for putting that out. I was at this place. You made me think of this different. And now I'm at this place or I'm doing this and, uh, or I was doing this and I stopped because I saw you doing, I saw you being so, you know, diligent and, and, and you said, you said something that changed my mind about something. And now I stopped doing that. That was a bad habit for myself. And I'm starting to do these things. Um, years ago, I started meeting with a, a young guy in Scotland, a young designer. I was not Scotland, Ireland. Um, and, uh, he was, he was, you know, young and, and, and he was a freelancer and, and did had no idea who God was or anything like that. And, and I'm just me and, and people ask me all the time, like, how do you speak about God? So, so, um, naturally I'm like, I just, that's just, that's just who I am. I'm just going to, that's, I, I talk about God all the time. So I'm not going to stop on social media. I'm just going to, you know, speak how I speak. And so I talk about God all the time and I'm not a believer and, and he would laugh and whatever. And recently, <laughs> This is, this has started, this started in 2019, me meeting with him. And recently, uh, he stopped drinking. He got into a program because he's in a program. They start talking about God more. He recently bought a Bible. <laughs> now he's reading a Bible and I'm like, I'm like, wow, that's really amazing that God uses these small little instances in, in, in my life to help someone else in their life. And I didn't do anything. I didn't right. do anything. I just showed up. I talked to him. That's it. Right. But you have no idea the impact that God's going to do through your words, actions, or just you showing up uh, anywhere, really. Social media is just, yeah. you know, it gets a bad rap, but, and there's a lot of bad things on it, but for if sure, you, if you use a platform to, point to God and point to purpose and point to amazing ways to improve people. It works in the good. Yeah. Well, there's no intrinsic value to like social media or money even, right? Like it's not money in itself is not evil. It's, it's going to amplify who you are, right? It's, it's how you use it. It's how you use your authority. It's how you use your influence. It's how you steward your, businesses, everything else like that. So yeah, just show up and you don't know what those seeds planted are going to equate to for someone. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's, it's pretty incredible. Like I get messages all the time about just random, random things. And the other day, a friend from Los Angeles, I haven't talked to, and I literally have not talked to this person in 10 years. He's a good friend. We just, he's got his family and we just haven't talked in a long time since I've been here messaged me the other day um, because he saw my post about the season three starting up of We the Trust, which you were on season two. And he's like, man, I'm, I started at the beginning and I can't stop. He's like, so good, man. It's like, I was like, I was like, awesome. That's great. But he, he, it, he, it, it inspired him so much to, to reach out and mm. to, to connect and right. You know, just because if, if your motivation, if your, if your authentic motivation is for the betterment of people, 
then then God's going to use it. Yeah. Yeah. What's the purpose? And that kind of goes to this whole episode. What's the purpose behind it? Right. Don't worry about the outcome. You can create a roadmap. You can pursue excellence. You can pursue being better in every area of life, but don't try to dictate that outcome and say that this is success and this isn't success. Just show up into the day-to-day life. Take action. Take action. That's it. Take action. Well, this has been fantastic, Mario. I really appreciate you. And what are you working on? Where can people find you? How can you help them? Ooh, uh, what am I working on? Um, man, I'm I'm finishing up some final edits on a 100-day devotional that I'm putting out. Mm. Um, that will be out the first half of this year. So I've got another couple months. Uh, almost done with this kind of second round of editing. Um, I've got to, cool. I've got to resubmit to the publisher. So that should be out uh, by summer. Uh, I'm, I've got some random things in the works. I'm, I'm creating a course on building trust, uh, kind of the little method that I was talking to you about earlier. And um, my brother and I are, are creating a, uh, an actual um, physical bag, like a, like a wearable kind of cross body bag that, that is, uh, we think is kind of really cool and unique. So, um, but I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll send you all those things later, but, but yeah, so mostly you can, you can find me on Instagram at, at the Mario Casada Q U E Z A D A. Perfect. We'll have it in the show links. Um, again, appreciate your time. It's Anytime. a pleasure to talk to you as always. You too, man.